Now, growing up in the 80s, there were three iconic supercar manufacturers for me. There was Ferrari uh, with the Testarossa, the Lamborghini Countach, post on the wall, loved that. And of course, the iconic Porsche 911. Now, I know you guys love a build series and we've finished the Testarossa now. So it's time to start a new build series. And what better one to choose than this gorgeous 1988 911. I'm kind of in the wrong colours there. I mean, Ferrari red for some reason. And, you know, we finished that Ferrari Testarossa. You love that series. And we're deep into the third Ferrari Testarossa now. Can you believe it? But that's not what this episode is about. This episode is about this iconic Porsche 911. So let's have a little bit of a chat about this and introduce it first. So what flavour Porsche 911 do we have here? Because there's lots of flavours of Porsche 911s over the years and people get confused, even me, who's a Porsche fan. But this is a G-body 911. It's um, also called sometimes the Impact Bumper uh, 911. Started life in 1973. Before that was the Series 1 911s. And we just finished a, a 912 recently. That's the same body shape of that series one if you like but this is a g body one and it's got the iconic picnic table here as well or the whale tail as it's sometimes called and this model here is a very late one it's 1988 i think the this model of 911 went to 1989 and this is a carrera 911 so that's what it is what are we going to do with it So the first thing we've done is we've got rid of the 3.2 litre engine and the gearbox. But it's not just the engine and gearbox that we've taken out. As you can see from the side profile before, the car sitting very high up. That means we've moved, removed all of the weight, not just the engine and gearbox. But I know you're itching to know, what's the weight of that then, Mogs? Well, let's find out, shall we? All of this here in front of me explains why this behind me is sitting as high as a Paris Dakar rally car because this little lot weighs quite a bit and I was quite surprised how much it did weigh. Now I'm going to give you a few minutes to get a number in your head to try to guess the total weight of what we've dropped out but bear in mind it's engine, gearbox, you've got a starter motor there, the exhaust, you've got all of this stuff here, fuel tank, spare wheel, you've got things like the gear shifter that we don't need, gear shifter rod that has to go front to back, the oil lines, the, all the bits and pieces that we don't need there, the oil, the petrol, all of that weighs how much? Now, before I give you the numbers, I just want to clarify that this is not normally how we do things here. What we normally do is we corner weight the car when it comes in with the engine and gearbox and all the fluids in. Then we strip all the bits and pieces out, corner weight it again once it's empty, and that gives us the information we need to figure out where we can add the weight back in, things like batteries and motors, obviously, to get to the same weight distribution of the original car or improve it in the case of rear engine cars uh, like 911s and Beetles, for instance. But I know you're all itching to know what the numbers are, so here's the scores on the doors. And I've written it down on a bit of paper because I would forget otherwise. So, engine and gearbox. And I should point out, we do weigh the crates beforehand to take the weight of the crate out of the numbers because I know we'll get picked up on that otherwise. So, the weight of the engine and gearbox is 292 kilos. The weight of all the other stuff on that pallet over there, which is the fuel tank, spare wheel, shifter, rods, oil lines, etc., etc., is 61.5 kilos. The oil that came out was 4.5 kilos, and the fuel that came out was 63.75 kilos. So, total weight is 421.75 kilos. So, Basically, 420 kilos is what we've got to play with to be able to put back onto this car when we electrify it. And let's have a chat about that. Now, as far as converting Porsches to electric is concerned, this is not our first rodeo, I think it's fair to say. We've converted quite a few Porsches in the past, um, 944, 914s, um, 356 behind me, and quite a few Porsche 911s and a 912. I think that's all. Is that all? Have I missed any? No. Nope. The only one we haven't done is the, 
What was the one of the V8 in the front? 928? 928, yeah. No. Really, I'd really like to do a 928, anybody out there? Really like to do a 928. Anyway, so 911s. This is definitely not our first 911. We've done a few of these already, but just to set up the scene as to what the plan is, what we're gonna do here is front battery pack, rear battery pack, motor in the rear, obviously, 60 kilowatt hour battery pack total. It's gonna have CCS on it as well. And before we get into you know, episode two, where we're gonna actually start getting into things, I just wanna set you up with, a, you know, or explain, if you like, some of the challenges that we have to overcome when we're doing cars like 911s. Ta-da! You love doing that, don't you? I do love doing that scene. <laughs> right, so what we got going on in the front? Well, petrol tank and spare wheel that's come out has created a hole because I'm standing on the floor at the moment. So what's gonna go in here is the front battery pack and that's pretty much it really. I think the 12 volt battery's gotta go in obviously. Um, DC to DC converter's gotta go in the front which is converts the 400 volts down to the 12 volts to charge up that battery. But that's pretty much it. Front battery pack, 12 volt uh, battery and the DC to DC converter. And over there we're gonna have the CCS charging plug as well. So the rest of it's gonna happen at the back. Right, in this area here, obviously we're gonna have the rear Tesla drive unit. We can either put the large Tesla drive unit or the small Tesla drive unit in our 911 kits. And this one's gonna have the small, which is still plenty of power for a car like this. And then around about this area here, we're gonna have the rear battery pack. And all that's gonna sit on a cradle. It's just gonna bolt in to the engine mounts here and the transmission mounts here. All our kits, there's no cutting, no welding, no holes to be drilled. It all just bolts in to standard mounts, if you like. And if you want to see a little bit more detail on that, click on the link above, because we did an episode on the Porsche 912 conversion kit, which is very similar to this, if, uh, apart from the fact that the 912 has two less cylinders, so the engine mounts are a little bit further forward because the engine is shorter. Um, so as well in this area, we're going to have the heater, because on a 911, which is air-cooled, the heat in the cabin comes from the engine. So that big fan that normally sits here blows that air over the cylinders and the heads. It gets warmed up, and then it goes through these pipes here into the cabin. So we're going to have an electric heater in this area as well, throwing the heat into the cabin. And then just above my head here is a load of holes which we're going to reuse, which is going to be for things like the coolant, uh, battery coolant, for instance, um, the high-voltage cables the low voltage cables and anything else we're going to need are going to go through there so that's it in this area so interior wise it's going to pretty much look the same post conversion as it is now apart from the instrumentation it's going to slightly change some more ev orientated information because i don't think we're going to need oil pressure and oil temperature and things like that but apart from that inside the other thing that's also worth pointing out is that we always have to overcome a challenge of how we're going to get the cables and the, the wiring and also the coolant lines from a front battery pack to a rear or the other way around depending on where the radiators are and where the motors are and how we do it in the 911 is we repurpose this central spine here where things like the clutch cable and the accelerator cable and the shifter rods and stuff used to uh, be situated in there but they're not in there anymore so we're going to reuse that to run the cables but it's not just as simple as poke the cables through and you know leave them running in there you've got to secure the cables and also pay particular attention to when they come through the bulkhead using those existing holes there you need to use things like compression glands or a 3d printed part that we use here to hold those cables securely in place so they don't chafe so there we go, that's the starting point for this build. We managed to drop off 420 kilos. In fact, I just had a message while we've been filming that our Scandinavian partners, Tom, has managed to get 460 kilos off their 911 that they're doing over there. Uh, but I think he's cheating a little bit because that's a 930, it's a turbo. So there's a lot more gubbins, if you like, that they're taking off that car, but a very nice car it is too. And they're gonna be using our conversion kit as well. So go and check out their channel as well, but don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel if you wanna follow this build and this journey of the 911 getting converted to electric. But question to you guys out there, what Porsche, 
Would you like to see converted to electric? Would you prefer a Porsche 356 like we've got over there? Or are you a 911 guy? And if it's a 911 guy, what era of 911? Or are you more the moderns, well, say modern, still quite classic, but those front engine cars like the 924, the 944, or that 928? Let us know in comments below which Porsche would you like to see electrified? And on that note, hope you liked this episode and we'll see you on the next one.